What's going on, everybody? It is Jay Wilson, and this is not a normal live video. It's not a normal time. It's not a normal day. But what is what is normal? I guess. Hmm. What is it? <laughs> First off, I'd like to thank anybody that's taken time to jump into this hot rod and say hello. I'd also like to thank folks that are supporting the channel and helping it continue to uh, grow and not dwindle as much as it probably should right now. But before I get into the topic of the video, I wanted to really talk about what, what happened at Aquashella. I had something that was, I had many things that were mind blowing, but this one in itself was, I don't know, it was fantastic, put it that way. So if you saw some posts on Instagram, Facebook, Ruben Rivera, he's in the chat right now, uh, brought his kids and I was able to facilitate something that was really cool. That's just something I do. It's not for social media. It's not for anybody else. It's maybe I do it for selfish reasons because it makes me feel good. Um, I got to meet Deborah, who was there waiting in line and, you know, it's crazy that there are people that are showing up to events that are coming specifically to either see myself or anybody else that does some sort of social media aquarium style stuff. But there was an extremely impactful, like very impactful meeting that I had um, and there were many, but this one stuck out and you'll understand when I tell this story, I will not use his name, but I will give you some, you know, idea of what happened. And then after I'll jump right into all the fancy schmancy stuff, of what's going on and, and all of that hubbub. So hit the like button, share the video and let's get it done. So. I'm standing at the booth, Aquashella. It's grooving, it's shaking, the music's going. It's it's pretty intense, actually. And to be honest with you, you don't really know what to expect from shows. And I'm doing a lot of shows. I'm traveling a lot, going to a lot of um, aquarium stores. And so you meet a ton of people. And I am just literally standing behind the podium and this gentleman walks up with an older woman who I presume is his mother. She stops and says, how do you pronounce the name of your company? And that's a common question. And I, I communicate like, like, like you, I don't want to say like you should, but I communicate with no barriers. Like it doesn't matter where you come from, what you do, who you are, what you look like, I'm going to treat you the same way, no matter what. And I said, Siche. And immediately this gentleman said, oh my goodness, Jay Wilson, how are you? He was blind. Like, legit blind, not, he needed someone with him at all times. And I'm blown away that in all of the things that are happening around us, he recognized my name. Now, yes, I understand that um, he, he probably has a, a heightened sense of, of hearing, but he knew me. And like, I'm getting goosebumps telling the story, but that's just one piece. So if anybody meets him, they're going to say the same things. How are you? Thank you very much. But he's watching aquarium related glass box related YouTube channels and he cannot see. It got me thinking, this is incredible. He is listening and picturing the things that we are talking about. So instead of saying, 
the cliche things of, oh, how is the how is Aquashella? I asked him, do you feel all the awesome vibrations? And then I wanted to know what it was like for him. Because the word different isn't a bad word. And he gets to experience things in a far different way than I do. We're both human, but he gets to interact far differently than most of us do. So we maybe chatted for, I don't know, a few minutes. And this is where, I don't know, being the facilitator of this, matter of fact, John segued and said, I met him too in a very similar way. And that's the segue. His mom is walking him around this show and chances are she may not know who, who, what, where, what's the name, the YouTube. And I said, all right, Derek, <laughs> like, all right. Do you want to go see some other YouTubers? And he was like, oh, absolutely. And I said, well, well, who do you watch? Who do you listen to? And I happened to glance over my shoulder because we were right next to the booth that has all the YouTubers in it. And I saw John from KG Tropicals, Tanner from Serpa Design. I saw uh, Jason from Prime Primetime Aquatics. And I saw Sean Peck from Peck Tech. And there was somebody else standing there. Oh, and Dobby from Aquapros. And he was like, yes, 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 yes. And so I got the privilege to take him over there. I got to walk him to meet people and hear familiar voices and for him to just relish in something that some of us take for granted. And I, I even said, you know, this is John from KG Tropicals. Say hello, John. This is Serpa, for Tanner Serpa from Serpa Design. And then I went back to my booth. I said goodbye. I went back to my booth. But that's where the coolest thing happens. I'm out. One, I'm usually pretty uncomfortable, even though it doesn't seem that way communicating with folks that I've never met before, but I get to watch this person who enjoys folks like myself. And he had some of the, the heaviest hitters in a circle around him, communicating with him. Like that's, He knew my voice. He knew John from KG Tropical's voice. He knew Tanner's voice. He knew Primetime's voice. He knew Aquapro's voice. It brought a lot of things into perspective, but it also brought me back to the feeling of, of why I like doing what I do. I enjoy aquariums. I enjoy glass boxes. I enjoy impacting people. And when I say that, it's not a cliche thing. It, it is absolutely true. And if you've ever met me, you would know that that is what I love doing. If I can make something happen, I'll do it. And so it really just invigorated me again that this is why we need to be around each other. We're, we're humans. We're mammals. We are a community creature. And without it, It's not good. You know, I, I got to take uh, Ruben's son who didn't, you know, he, he liked Paul Cafaro. I'm not Paul Cafaro. I know that. But I can be the piece that connects him to Paul Cafaro in a way that will be far more impressionable than him going around and waiting in a long line and then what? So we went right to Paul Cafaro. And then his eldest son is into reptiles. And he wanted to meet Brian Barczyk. So we FaceTimed Brian Barczyk. It, these are the things that we, we have to do as human beings. Like we've had a year break. 
Now it's time to get back to being human beings, good quality human beings. We don't want more of human beings. We want quality of those human beings, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't know if this is him in the comments, but the name, the name would, uh, would make sense. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I, I mean, I had goosebumps, I mean, all day, off and on all day. So if the blind fish keeper is the gentleman that came to the booth and was with who appeared to be his mom and I got the privilege to walk you to the YouTuber's booth. Thanks for coming in, man. Thank you. It's, it's, it's amazing. So if you've got questions, leave them in the comments. Now I'm going to go over what this is all about. I am really busy. When I say that, I mean really, really busy to the point where it's hard for me to edit videos. It's hard for me. I can get content all day. I travel everywhere. Matter of fact, I, I landed Monday. Wendy and I went right to the house, saw the tile. Then we went yesterday and we saw the cabinets. So I'm doing all of that. I'm doing my career. I, I you don't understand. I love what I do. And I love what I do because of the company that I'm with and because my, my boss allows me to just, just do what I do and he keeps me between the lanes. And so my job is to get in contact with pretty much every aquarium store that I possibly can. And I like to do that around trips. So when I was in Florida, that was the second time that I was in Florida within a month. Now I'm going to New Jersey, but that's not it. I'm going to New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. And I'm leaving next week, the beginning of next week. Somewhere during travel, when I'm spending time on the road, visiting stores, doing my notes, making my calls, I have to figure out how to edit videos. It doesn't work. It really doesn't. And then my channel stalls. And regardless of the numbers, I really don't. The only time I pay attention to the numbers is to know if the content that I am producing is worth the watch. And I can see it drop off. I can see the things that I, I don't focus completely on drop off. And yeah, it sucks, but I recognize it and I'm not, you know, I'm not embarrassed about it. I, I just realized that I need help. And so I am working on finding somebody that could help me edit videos. Um, I don't pay really well. So I'm working on that. I'm working on this really cool refresh that is going to bring this new glass box lounge to life. It's like seriously to life. I am working with companies to find out how I can get the aquariums, the animals. I mean, I've got, I am so grateful that I have aquarium stores willing to donate fish and it's so exciting. It's not, you know, I've always wanted this room and I started, I really started to get towards it in Texas, but then, you know, life happens. And so now I actually have the opportunity to build a room. I'm not talking a breeding room. I'm not talking a room where I'm putting together two by four natural wood, paint them black aquarium stands. That's not it. I don't want that. That's garbage for me, for me. Maybe not for you. Maybe that is your dream and that's okay. That's good. My dream is aesthetics. Everything is similar. The lines are clean. The lighting is good. I can sit there on a nice, comfortable seating thing, whatever it happens to be, and it feels like an escape. It's a lounge to chill out. You ever go, 
if anybody's ever flown first class or had access to some of these like VIP lounges for Delta American places like that, international travel, that's the feeling I want. It is a getaway. It's a, it's a true getaway. It's not tank on tank on tank. Can't take care of it. Looks like doo-doo. And now you're not happy. I'm getting back to what it is that I started this in the first place. And it was relaxation, enjoyment, to view those fish, to listen to the sounds around, to hear, you know, the fish smack the top of the water and to be in its own, its own area. It costs a lot of money too, which I got to continue to work to get these things done. So matter of fact, the blind fish keeper, I am that guy. It was so cool meeting you and having you escort me to the YouTube booth to meet everyone else. Thank you so much. Uh, is that's why I make videos. I mean, it truly is. So do you know what stores that you're visiting in New Jersey, Alishan? Uh, a lot, a lot. Uh, Aquarium Care Center, Aquarium Center. Uh, Reef Co. Um, my boy, fish out of New Jersey. Um, trying to think of some other stores off the top of my head. I've got them all written down. Absolutely fish. So where I'm getting at is the content is not flowing. And somebody had asked me, I don't know, on a comment before, why does it seem like I'm pandering to get people to share my stuff? I'm not pandering. I'm asking, you know, to keep the things that I've done and are doing relevant. I'm asking for folks to be supportive of the channel. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking you to become a member. I'm asking you to share some videos, leave some comments, rewatch some videos, whatever it is. And the reason being is because I understand that the content is not coming out. And while I apologize, it is what it is. If I could, I don't know, if I could just jump into things and film uncut, unedited and put it up and know that it would do okay, then, that, then I would do that. But I can not because regardless of what anybody says, people are looking for polished videos of some sort. They don't want to watch garbage. They don't want to watch stuff that I've done five years ago. They want to watch better quality, better audio, all of those things that requires a lot of packing. Like I bring this whole Pelican case and, and I barely open it because I don't have time. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what it is that I need to do. And I would much rather be communicating with folks like the blind fish keeper and Deborah and Paul than, and Ruben than to just be behind a camera all the time. So there's a lot of new things that are going to be happening and it's going to be happening as I'm moving into the house, which is right around mid August. Ruben, stop that. <laughs> um, thank you very much. It is not necessary, but it is greatly appreciated. So the idea, did you have time to go to Imperial tropicals while you're in Florida? No. No, I literally flew in Thursday, picked up my stuff from Ikea, set up on Friday, Saturday and Sunday were the show, and Monday I was gone. So that's how I operate most of the time. And if I have time for myself, then I can edit and things like that. But, but you want to rest, right? You want to chill out. Uh, if you can scoot over to PA, there are some good stores there from the Hidden Reef. I'm going to try. It's a lot of driving. So, you know, hitting all those states requires a lot of driving but I'm going to do my best to hit that store up. Deborah, thank you very much. Again, unnecessary, but greatly appreciate it. Um, I do have a lot of energy. Um, I have a lot of energy because I love what I do. If, if I didn't, I'd be sluggish, but I'm not like this every single day. There are days when things just aren't fired up as they normally are. But when I'm on the go, I really enjoy what I'm doing. Um, the saltwater tank. So here's, here's the main update. My vivariums are fantastic. I haven't lost a single animal in here. Matter of fact, I got goby babies. I don't even know how they must have been in there for a while because I only see one goby because they are very aggressive. And yeah, 
but I saw some fry. So can they have babies by themselves? I didn't think so. Um, either way, got babies. Everything's good in this aquarium. Everything's good with the shrimp. I've got more than I can handle. I had started a um, shrimp colony um, tank and then a shrimp, a snail colony tank so that I can have some snails for Dwight. Dwight is doing fantastic. The Congo tank is just, it's, it's great. Um, Slash is amazing. So all of these tanks are great. The saltwater tank is going to be the first to go. It is almost fully broken down. All the coral is going in this tank, which is a disaster because the light is way too powerful for this little thing. I got to move the coral down to my local fish store. And then this tank will be gone. These guys will go in totes. Slash will go in totes. So those two aquariums are gone. I am keeping the Congo tank. So when I move the first the first aquarium to get set up will be the paludarium because I need to move the Congos over and get slash into this tank. Um, and then the vivariums come inside and I start procuring aquariums for inside the glass box lounge. Lee's creative feature said, editing is the worst part for me. It is for me too. I enjoy it if that was all I was doing. I have far too many other things that I have to do and that I want to do that editing consumes so much of my time. The problem is, you know, I can have Wendy, I guess I ask Wendy, Hey, do you think you can help me out? And she can say yes. And maybe she does three or four videos and then she has to stop because things get haywire and she's got to do some other stuff. That's possible. So I don't want to put her in that position unless she's willing to take it on very seriously. Um, I had somebody helping me with YouTube and it was working and then I wasn't doing anything and they weren't editing for me, but I also can't pay a ton of money. So it really has to be the perfect fit where somebody is growing as I'm growing and we're growing together and it will be known. It's not going to be some like ghost editor where, you know, a lot of folks will have somebody that films for them. They're the face and then somebody else edits and then that's it. I, I, I'm transparent. I'm as transparent as it can come. But when you spend, like I was talking to Tanner Serpa today and um, he spends like 15 to 20 hours of video editing. But that is why his content is timeless and so amazing. I can't do that. That's one video a week he's doing. That is before filming. So the editing part takes that long. And filming could take however long it's taking him to do that. And he has all these projects that keep going. But it's, it's crazy. If I do a video, it maybe takes me, you know, an hour to film and then three to four hours to edit. But then you have to remember, I'm also, I also have a career. And then I only get my son a certain amount of time and I want to make sure that that time is dedicated and focused. I mean, as much as I can on him and I don't want to edit a video when he's here. And it's not that I can't do it. I know I can do it because I've done some really cool videos. Um, but those are the ones that I didn't have any distractions. So it's very hard, especially when you get on the road, you know, I have to make sure that you know, I could edit this video and that I can get it uploaded while I'm on the road. And, you know, people go, well, yeah, you should do like six videos ahead of time. Yeah, it's easier said than done. I'd have to take vacation. <laughs> uh, again, Ruben, Deborah, thank you very much for the super chats. So, um, yeah, that's in a nutshell, that's what I have for an update. So it's almost like <sighs> it's hectic. And I, and I, it's not that I, I think you need to know it's, I wanted to tell you, you know, what was going on. Um, but I am thinking about, uh, on this trip that I'm going to be doing, picking out some key stores and doing store tours, uh, on YouTube. And maybe that'll be something that I can do because, you know, they only have to be three or four minutes. You can get an idea of what the store looks like, what they have to offer and some really cool stuff. And then that's pretty much it. 
I may be able to do that while on the road. Um, but again, it's one of those things where I have to test it out and I don't want to make promises because I hate under delivering when I over promise something. Um, rounded Rob, then you have to create a thumbnail. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it and people always say, you know, Oh yeah, just uh, do it this way. And then, and then you do it and they're like, Oh, it was clickbait, but they watch everyone else that does a clickbait style title and the thumbnail and they don't say anything because maybe it's expected, but it's like anything. When you look at something, peanuts, you look at it and you go, hmm, that's appetizing. I'm going to eat that. But what if it was like a green bag or it was, you know, an all see-through cheap bag and it was handwritten on and it's like, eh, and it said it expired. You're probably not going to click on it or eat this, right? So... At the end of the day, there's a lot of things that play into it. And I get it. I totally get it. But I feel like I've worked so long on what I've been doing and I enjoy it because I get to meet folks like we talked about in the beginning. Like I get to meet those folks. And without this, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So everybody always says, I got to find what it is that I'm supposed to be doing in life. What if what you were supposed to be doing in life is what you're doing right now? You just haven't unveiled that specific purpose. And that's what I always think. Like I love talking clearly. I love communicating. I love making people laugh and having fun. And I could do that with this. I could do that with this digitally. I can then do that with this when I'm in a store and then I'm at a show. It's really cool. Um, if you're, if you are in the area of the Meadowlands, Secaucus, New Jersey, there is a show next weekend, not this weekend, the following weekend, it is called Reefapalooza, New York. It is at the Meadowlands convention center in Secaucus, it's right off the highway. Um, it is all saltwater, all saltwater. There, there might be some bettas there or something, but Primarily, it's all salt water, but it is a really cool thing to experience because, well, I'll be there. <laughs> no, um, there's going to be a lot of things. There's things to purchase that could be used for fresh water. And yes, it, it'll definitely be worth it for you to show up. Um, I can't wait for shows to start up again here in the UK. <sighs> yeah, I can't wait for you, man. Jay, one more time. Thank you very much for all you did for my boys. They spoke about it all weekend and about you. Thanks. I greatly appreciate it. You know, Ruben's been around since the beginning and I greatly appreciate his support and his kids support. And if they get to hear this, hope you enjoy your new snake and buddy, I hope you enjoyed uh, meeting Paul Cafaro. I He had Paul Cafaro's hat. He'd bought all, I mean, he was just like all in it right away. So it was really neat to see. So do we have any questions? Does anybody have any like legit questions regarding their aquarium? Um, maybe you know somebody that wants to edit some videos and they're pretty good. Send them my way. Follow me on Instagram. I post every day on Instagram. So you'll get to see a lot of stuff that's happening like these fish fighting each other right now. Absolutely ridiculous. Always. Let me see if I could... Uh, If I feed, we may be able to see the gobies. I'm not sure, but seeing one is better than none. So I'm going to grab this camera somehow. I'm going to unplug it. Let me make sure that I'm, my field of view is golden. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. There's just a lot of rock work in there. So let me turn this off. I was really looking forward to talking about meeting at the Blind Fish Keeper in my stream tonight, but you stole my thunder. <laughs> thunder, th th thunder, thunder. Um, no, John. John and I have a, a relationship, a good, good relationship. And seriously, you need to talk about him because about 99% of the people that are watching you tonight have not seen this video. <laughs> so let me... Let me grab 
Oh, he's right there. Hold on. At least we can see one of them. I got to unplug this. Keep the rock work. Come on. Where are you, buddy? He was literally right there on top of that rock. Little sucker. Uh, wait. Man. All right. I'm going to have to throw some food in there. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a little messy. There he is. Baby Kobe. So I think he got a little, he was under that rock when I saw him through the camera. Everybody knows what's happening. As soon as I hold up North Fin, <laughs> they go bonkers. All right. Oh, there he is. You guys are getting a good view of him, man. This is good. Oh, sweet. Okay. We might see him. Oops. There he goes. So I've only seen three of them. And I don't know. There could be more. There could be less. Oh, boop. they could have gotten. He's a little heifer, though. Uh, they could have gotten sucked up by the, I love that catfish. There's the saltwater tank. It's going to flicker. And then you can uh, watch this flicker too. That's the Congo tank. Dwight is somewhere in there. And then we are back to this face. <sighs> so that's it. Um, you got to see the Eremotus. Yes. And Jay, I do have a question. After you got back to your booth from walking the blind fish cube around, did you close your eyes for a moment? I don't, I, I don't recall. Um, I recall looking back over my shoulder and just realizing that what we do, even if it seems silly, is is very impactful. Because sometimes you do it and you don't know. Um, everything, Wendy, what did I miss? <sighs> uh, Holly McComb, so you're going to be there as Jay Wilson or CJ? I'm going to be there as Jay Wilson in the CJ booth. I set it up. It's just me. Uh, so, yeah, if you'd like to come keep me company, I will be the only one there in the booth. It is a big 20-foot booth. There'll be music. There's going to be, there's always candy. Um, and yeah, it's going to be really fun. But that was pretty cool that we got. I mean, he's, I'm afraid to move the rocks when I break it down because there's going to be pff, crazy. I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I'm probably going to get more trophies and let go of the Darden eye. Um, I was talking to Josh Cunningham at Cunningham Cichlids, and I think I'm going to do two trophies together, which usually is frowned upon, but I believe that what I'm going to do, there's going to be no crossbreeding, and I'm not going to be selling them. So, ew, ew, what? Candy? Candy's fantastic. So, yeah, look forward to that tank. The Congo tank will be in the paludarium. And then it's going to be some fish. Oh, behind the rock? It's probably just more babies. The Moragos are looking fantastic, though. I'm so excited to see them grow. And, uh, yeah, so the aquariums that I'm looking to do are going to be 72, 25 by 27. And we'll see if it pans out. It's, it's going to be a slow process because I don't want to rush it and I want everything to be the same. So I have to pick one company and I've been talking to quite a few companies. So we'll see how it goes. I'm excited. I'm nervous. 
the YouTube thing is always on my mind because of social media. And yeah, it's, I'm, I'm doing this really cool marketing piece for work because I do all the stores and then I do all the, um, the social media. Um, so technically you're not supposed to put, somebody just asked, why not two trophies together? Uh, technically you're not supposed to put uh, two different variants of trophies together because what you don't want to have is this muddled bloodline, which is what we find in a lot of stuff. I mean, even in dogs, we're like, ha, ah, a Labrador retriever and a poodle. Oh, a golden retriever and a poodle, a golden doodle. You know, there's, you know, uh, a bulldog and a great Dane and we're calling it a bull Dane or a Dane dog. Yeah. There's so many different things that we can't do it to every animal folks. So they typically say don't. So if they're breeding, you should know what's in there. You could track the bloodline, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what was my favorite part of being at Aqua Shell this past weekend? Ah, it was the people. Hands down the people. I mean, I talked about it at the beginning of the video. It's always the people. Will I be at ACA in St. Louis? Ah. I don't even know what it is, to be honest with you. I really don't. But there's a possibility that I may go in. I, I just don't know. I may go in as a spectator and not as a booth. Uh, because every time that I go, I don't get a chance to hang out and do some cool stuff because I'm always in the vending room. We'll see. I don't know. I, I think I could drive to that one. So we'll have to find out the timing. When exactly is it? Because there is a show in August in Chicago. There is a show in Dallas in October. So if you're in the Chicago area, late August, mid to late August, Aquashella, Chicago. I better see you folks there. If you live close, I better, I better see you close. <laughs> um, yeah, but there's also like all these little crazy things that are in the works that I'm excited about, whether you're excited about them or not. Yeah, I, I guess at that point it's irrelevant. Uh, I guess I would get kind of old work in the shows all the time. No, not all the time. It's, I don't sell with CJ. So you come to my booth, I'm not selling. I'm giving you information. I get to do um, really cool stuff where if you're selling, it's a lot of work. Uh, fun fact, Wendy and I first met at an ACA years and years ago, years and years ago. She was my competition. Didn't matter. I destroyed her. <laughs> I, I can't say that. I didn't destroy her. I guess I came off as a little bit of a, of a jerk um, because she came up and said, I really like your marketing. And I was like, yeah, thanks. Because <laughs> he was competition. Um, Mike Stambaugh, are you going to be at OCA Extravaganza this year? No. Nope. I am going to be potentially doing something that I never thought I would be able to do in my entire life. So, but I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. Look, at the end of the day, all of my chips are on the table. The house has all of my chips. I have some things that I, I, I have to procure over time I, that I don't have chips for it. So all of the chips are on the table for this house. And that's the way I want it to be. And then after the house, I've got one mission. One. And that is to take Wendy, myself, and Liam to Jakku, <laughs> even though it's not Jakku. <laughs> so um, to him, it's Jakku. Uh, it's where a, a mouse lives. So that's also costing a lot of chips. So I got to sell, got to make commissions. I got to work more. I got to make more money off of YouTube. Um, I'm not complaining. I just got a lot to do. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that I would love to do in a year. OCA is probably not going to be one of them. 
although I would love to be there, I would, I would rather be with my family. Um, Halloween is Aquashella, Dallas. I will be there for work. This next week, I will be all over the Northeast. Connecticut, you're there. Massachusetts, I'm there. Again, New York, New Jersey. If you're there, come check it out. Rhode Island, I'd love to meet you. I'll be at the stores. You can follow along. Check out the community page for YouTube. I post some stuff there. I do polls. Uh, it's very interactive. Um, if you want to help uh, build the, <laughs> the, uh, the glass box lounge, feel free to show up. Uh, ready to work, uh, bring glass with you so we can <laughs> build aquariums. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, a lot's going on. I wanted to update everybody, but I appreciate all that you do. It's I'm so grateful for it. And you folks give me an opportunity to continue going and then being able to do the things that I enjoy doing, like impacting other folks. So greatly appreciate it. Remember, do something kind. Stop. <sighs> Nothing's ever going to be perfect. Nothing. Nothing's ever going to go 100% of your way. Nothing. But what I can tell you, July 23rd and 25th in St. Louis, I don't know. Maybe. I have no idea. But nothing's perfect. Your life's never going to be perfect. You're going to go through stuff that is going to suck when you're in the moment. And there's a podcast that is going to come out soon from, um, his name's Will, but I don't know the name of the nature's nature's den. I think nature's dang it. But what I said was when we tell ourselves or other people, when we meet them or our friends and we're like, yeah, I'm not even supposed to be where I am right now in life. I was supposed to be over there. So I'm not even supposed to be right here. You know that saying? Like, I wasn't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be further ahead, right? Because anytime we ever say anything like that, it's I, I should have been better. I should have been further along. I should have done all of this, but I haven't yet. We're not putting the blame on ourselves. It's not circumstantial. It really isn't. Because if you're going to say, well, it's circumstances, well, you caused those circumstances, right? So when we say, I shouldn't be here right now, the answer is you are here right now. You got here because you didn't get there because of the things you did, the choices you made, whether good or bad. You can't control everything, which is very hard. I understand. I deal with that every day. But you're in this position because you are in this position. So there's only two options. Let it go and enjoy this position or put it all in and head to where you want to go. But it is never going to manifest if all you do is talk about it. Laying out in the sun, man. If I win the lotto, I won't buy me a Maserati. Why do you have to win the lottery? Because you're only talking about it. You're, you're not even buying a lotto ticket. If I won the lotto, you don't win if you don't play. And it's the same thing with life. You don't win. And winning can be categorized in anything. It doesn't mean money. It doesn't mean big house. It doesn't mean fancy car. If you feel so good about what you're doing right now, then you're winning. You really are because there are people making millions and billions of dollars that are miserable. So if you are winning, then continue to do what you are doing. But if you are not winning in life, the only way to win is to train to grind and to push yourself to the limits and be better than that other person. Doesn't mean Joe next door. Doesn't mean Nancy down the street. That other person is you, the current you. So until you do that, suck it up buttercup because it's a long ride in the crap storm. You got to be all in. Whatever it is you're going to do. If it's mowing the lawn, you're all in. 
Cooking dinner, all in. Cleaning, all in. You have to be all in. You can't half-ass anything. You can't half-ass anything. If you're going to go to a buffet, be all in. Don't half-ass eating at the buffet because it costs some money. Own it. Like th- that's just this weird thing. Like, you know, you go to wash your car and, and you miss a spot and you're like, meh. That's the same way you treat everything else. And you can't say no because it's true. Well, it's better than their car. It doesn't matter if it's better than theirs. Is it better than the last time you did it? Get better and better each time you do something. If you are in your mind, you never thought that you would be in the position you are in and you had hoped that you would be somewhere else. Figure out what you did to get there that you can change to propel you to get over there. Sometimes folks don't want to move forward. They want to move laterally. That's okay. The only thing, just don't go backwards. Don't go backwards. It doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be, it could be a divorce. It could be a marriage, a relationship, finances. It could be your home. It could be you lost your job. It could be that you have a job, but you don't like it and you wish you were doing something else. The biggest thing I hear all the time is, well, I'm stuck. You're not stuck. I, you're not. My mom tells me that all the time. She always says, I I wish I could move here or be here. And I said, well, do it. Oh, I can't. Why can't you? Because you don't, and, and I tell my mom this, it's because you're not willing to take the challenge, the change, and the sacrifice at that moment to make that change. It's abrasive. It sucks. But I can tell you right now, right now in my life with all the stress that's going on, I am in a far better place than I was a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. And I am living life because I'm enjoying life. That's it. That's all she wrote. Stop complaining that you shouldn't be where you're at because it's you that got us there. And in the famous words of the Mandalorian, this is the way.